Hey everyone, how's it going? So this is uh, the first uh, Instagram Live that I've done in a while. Sorry, I'm just moving this around. It's a bit of a light deflector. I'm trying to get the light good so that we can also do a good recorded video at the moment. So uh, just bear with me while we try and get everything uh, pretty good. How's that looking? Is that looking pretty okay? We're getting a bit of buzz here. I'm gonna turn the, the room lights off quickly. And that should give us a much better bit of lighting. There you go, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? So yeah, how's it going everybody? Uh, we're live today and uh, just wanted to do some video and uh, talk to you all about uh, how things are going and uh, talk about uh, you know small business growth, is, which is the topic that I wanted to talk about today and uh, the topic that I posted in my uh, Instagram around uh, what are you planning for 2020 or 2020, is it, is it probably better called? So I wanted to talk about that a little bit and uh, see if you some guys come online and then we can uh, have a discussion about it. So that would be really cool. So uh, live right now, I see uh, Alina's joined. Hi, baby. Uh, you know, so I posted about, you know, whether there's going to be, um, whether you've got a plan for, for this year yet. You know, have you started off? It was Monday today, the first real major working week of the year. And how much have you actually planned and how much are you executing of what you wanted to do already? We all have ambitions and we all have things that we want to do and we want to get going and want to achieve, but are we actually achieving those and have we actually planned to do them? And uh, by the responses that I got in the post today, I could guess that really some people are a bit short on that. So it would be really good to uh, get together and have a t chat about that and talk about how we could be better at achieving those sort of things and better at towards getting our goals because you know we all have the plans we have the ambitions but it's the difference between actually executing on them and not which is going to be the difference between the success of your business the success of your enterprise and your personal success as well so it's very difficult to uh, do this it's not easy i'm not going to pretend it is but you really need to try and break things down and then you need to start getting into actionables and that's where i like check things like checklists and action lists and I find that that really motivates me in order to be able to do things in a much better way. Checklists have always been really good and uh, I've used them and I, you know, in my, in my work, we teach our customers to always use them to help them organize their work and make sure that they're doing everything better than they did before. And so it's not a surprise really that you, you know, that would translate well into you know, your own small business, personal business life and you'd be able to get things much better and much more effective and running in a much more productive way if you focus down on what sort of checklists that you were wanting to do. So one of the things that we could talk about is, you know, what are the sort of things for a small business that you could be planning to do this year? And what might be the things that you could benefit from doing this year and might help you grow this year? I'm assuming that you have some sort of growth plan and that that would therefore probably be quite good if you could uh, execute on that and uh, have some structure behind that. So. I'm just going to write a comment in here and apparently that's what I need to do to make sure that people can uh, actually find this. So I'm going to put small business growth. So this camera's going to shake a little bit. More business. Getting started. With a plan. So I could post that and then I think I can hold that down and I can pin it, pin comment, there we go. So then if anyone does actually pop in and uh, want to start talking with us, they'll see what it is, the subject. So I'm not gonna have to keep doing that every time we get a new person on. You're gonna see me also, this is the Instagram camera, this is my phone. I've actually got both of the cameras parallel because I'm recording this for my vlog as well in widescreen. So you're gonna be able to see this in both formats. So we've got a quite little sophisticated setup going on in front of me. So you will see my eyes slightly move from this camera to this camera a little bit. So don't be uh, perturbed if any of you guys see that. And uh, you know it'd be great to hear from uh, hear from you all and uh, write some comments in there just to let me know that you're all uh, seeing this and it's all making sense. So as I was saying, it's a great idea to be able to plan what it is that you're wanting to do to grow. 
So what are the things that you wanted to grow? Well, if you followed my Instagram or if you followed my YouTube channel at all over the past uh, four months, you'll know that I think that the main thing you need to do to grow as a small business is to focus on your social media presence. And you need to focus on your social media presence, not from a sales point of view, but from a branding point of view. Now, let me go back and say why I think that that's important. The reason that I think it's absolutely crucial for you to do that is because everything is being commoditized right now. We are seeing the fastest rate in which new businesses are emerging and new offerings are emerging and the ability for everyone to be able to be a seller and an expert in everything. So if you're a coffee shop now, great. But I have a choice of 10 different coffee shops within a few miles of my house. So the only differentiator that you have as that option is your brand. And you need to lean into that as much as possible in order to help your business grow in the long term. If you don't lean into it, the likelihood is that someone else is going to lean into their brand harder and then you're going to suffer. Now, this also doesn't mean that the biggest budget will always win because the biggest budgets tend to result from big companies, which are also very slow and very non, non aligned with the brand values of individuals. So if you're a small coffee shop in the local area, you will automatically have a brand advantage to a, to a certain customer segment versus say one of the corporate uh, big corporate coffee shop brands or something like that. People like me would rather go to a local coffee shop than they would go to a big corporate brand coffee shop. And there's lots of people like that. But if you're not branding and letting people that you know that know that you aren't them and that you don't have the same values as them, then they're unlikely to actually identify directly with them. So that's why it's really important for you to do that. And we're also going to hopefully in the coming uh, few weeks, we're going to have one of the uh, local coffee shops, actually, the owners, they're going to come on the uh, podcast and we're going to talk to them. And uh, I think that's going to be really interesting because they've got a really fascinating story and they've got a great little business that they've grown there. And they actually do their roasting, I think, also in, uh, in the local town. So that's going to be really interesting to talk about. So if, you, if you're going to be a coffee shop, why should you be bothering so much with social media? Why should it be something that you're really concerned with and you think that it's really important? Well, it's a way for you to be able to reach all the people locally that you wouldn't necessarily be able to reach so effectively using traditional media tools. So if you were wanting to use something like um, leaflets or an advert in the local paper that would be great but you're restricted to the circulation of that paper or you know of the leaflets and you're restricted to the people who actually will look at it and we know that those medias are not effective we also know that they're quite expensive as well adverts in those sort of publications or getting leaflets printed and then distributing them is time consuming and costly whereas if you spend enough time effectively on social media you can generate a good following and you can generate a good amount of attention for your brand for a relatively small value. In fact, in a lot of the platforms right now, TikTok and LinkedIn being the main two, you can generate a lot of visibility for your brand without even spending a penny apart from your own time using your cell phone. That's all you need to do and that's all you need to have is the ability to be able to go online on your cell phone and you can connect with people already directly. So why wouldn't you do that if you wanted to grow your business? It's basically free customers out there. And that's what every business wants. You know, the purpose of a business is to find customers. So your job has to be marketing in the first instance and then delivering once you've found those customers. And then you can worry about how you convert them to sales and you can worry about things like product quality and all those other attributes after that. So I think it's very important that you, you need to grasp that that's something to focus on. So if we're looking at the action list for 2020, the first thing we need to do is a little bit of a social media audit. You know, how often are we posting per day? What platforms are we posting on? How often are we interacting with potential customers online? How often are we getting involved in the conversations around our niches that are happening online in Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok? all those LinkedIn, all those different platforms. And therefore, what value can we generate back to us and how can we engage more with people so that they know more about what we're planning to talk about? So that's got to be your first thing. Do that little social media audit. Make sure that you understand what it is that you're going to be talking about. And 
not that what you're talking about, but more so you understand where you are today, then make a plan. If I'm only working on Instagram today, maybe I need to include Facebook. Maybe I need to do some more work on LinkedIn. I shouldn't be relying on just one social media platform either to drive all my traffic because that's not going to be preferable in the long term either. So I should have a multi-channel strategy from the beginning because that is the best way for me to diversify my risk in case anything happens with any of those particular channels. And even if I don't believe that one of those channels is going to work out very well for me, I can probably take lessons out of that channel that will do me, in the, in, do me well in the long term. So don't see it as so restrictive that you should do one channel and focus on that and get good at that because that could easily be a rug that's whipped out from underneath your feet. And that's not a situation that you want to be in. If you've already got that social media following going maturely, what should be your strategy? So you think that your Twitter, your Instagram, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your TikTok are all ticking along nicely, sorry, ticking along, um, and you really want to make sure that they're going to uh, keep going. What can you do to amplify those? Well, there are two things that you can consider to amplify those. One is you can start to do adverts, so you can start to actually pay to get more traffic more people to see your posts or actually have specific offerings go out. I would say use ads to get people to see your posts and to engage with your content is probably the better way for you to do it if you're a small business particularly. And then the other option is to look at influencer marketing. Now influencer marketing is a very interesting area. It's an extremely large industry already. They estimated that in 2018 uh, sorry, 2019, because we're in 2020 now. In 2019, the influencer market was somewhere in the region of over $5 billion in value. That's $5 billion was being spent in marketing budget towards influencers to have them endorse different businesses and different brands. And that is a huge amount of money, right? And there's a lot more options than you can have now than you know you used to have with different influencers. You can direct, approach influencers directly and see if they, could, they might want to work with you. There's obviously a lot of different influencer networks that you can do. There are also media companies that have influencer wings and they have, you know, for instance, different people that they can draw in. And you can consider influencers to be a, you know, up and coming NFL star in your city. You could consider them to be, you know, a little league baseball player in, in your town. You could look at anyone who's in your particular niche and has a good following. You only maybe want to amplify a few thousand. Obviously, the more influence they have, the more expensive they are. But these things can be very quite accessible and quite affordable. And so it's not something that you should necessarily discount that's not available for your business, depending on the scale that you are. You're going to want to be turning over probably, you know, in the hundreds, you know, to, to over half a million a year to be able to really fit that into your marketing budget in a meaningful way. But I'm assuming that your market marketing budget is probably going to be somewhere in the region of 10 to 20 percent of your turnover. If your if your budget is going to be below that, then you're probably going to have you're probably not going to be able to afford most of those strategies or they won't necessarily work out very well for you. But even if you have a lower budget, there are ways that you can hack influencer culture. For example, you, if you're a restaurant or a coffee shop, you can invite influencers to come. You can hold the party, you can start your own podcast and you can start to actually invite influencers on because then they will know. And you may not be able to find that use the top influencers in your area or the people who have the most followers, but you can start at the bottom and work your way up as well. So you can gather the party towards you and bring everyone together so that you can actually be there. So these are all things that you can be doing in 2020 in order to be able to grow your business. And now it might sound like I'm talking about a lot of stuff online, but most businesses, most people are making decisions about what products they buy and where they go to eat online and they're doing their research online before they even go to where they're going. Unless they've already had a good experience and they're returning, which is obviously you know the main thing that you're then responsible for once you're able to get that customer into your actual uh, business. So that's me talking on a very long monologue as, uh, as usual, which is what I'm pretty used to doing now and uh, sitting in front of the camera and talking for a very long time. It's uh, been a few minutes that I've been live so far. I'm not sure, uh, Alina, are you still online? Do you know how long I've actually been uh, live for so far? I can't see the timers on anything. So I think it's gonna be over 10 minutes, but I wanna push this to, you know, to be beyond uh, 
a good uh, good 15 minutes so we we haven't managed to pick up many people on uh, the instagram live yet which is a a bit disappointing but uh you know we, i still only have a couple of hundred followers on my instagram account my personal instagram account is is much better than this one but i wanted to start a fresh one because it's a completely different set of content that i want to so uh, but i thought instagram live would be a great place for me to go it, it's somewhere that i like to use and uh, I, I use instagram a lot myself and i think it's very valuable for small businesses as well when uh, you can engage with local people on instagram and if you if you're not familiar with how to find people and how to engage with people there's lots of great websites out there and lots of great tools that you can go but i think if before you work on growing your instagram or you work on having more followers you need to also make sure that you understand what it is you're trying to achieve by doing that you know whether you're looking towards influencers or you're looking towards just growing or bringing more content onto different platforms you need to make sure that you, you're doing what's effective for your business and you're working towards what the goal is. I posted today that, you know, followers and likes are not your goal and that I believe very strongly in that. And uh, I have to remind myself of that quite often as well because, you know, I, I measure myself or I consider my effectiveness in what I'm doing is the amount of value that I'm bringing to you all. And uh, I've had enough, you know, comments from people and personal feedback and DMs telling me that this content is really appreciated. Now, you might not necessarily see that reflected in all the likes and all the views. That's not important for me. That's not why I'm doing it. I did a video a uh, two months ago, I think it was quite early on in my sort of uh, vlogging, that I did a video where I talked about how to take feedback and how to receive feedback in the right way so that you process it right and that you, you feel you know right about the way that it's, it's talked about the feedback. And uh, I got a message or a comment, I can't remember which one it was, from one of my colleagues in France, uh, shout out to uh, Sandra if, uh, if she sees this, uh, hopefully we'll be able to catch up soon, it's been many years since I've, uh, I've seen her, and she said, you know, thank you for this, this is something that I really needed to hear at this moment, and, uh, you know, that's why I like to do this, because, you know, I really, you know, I get a kick out of helping people. And, uh, you know, for me, I want to add value to all of you out there and I want to help you with what you're doing, because for me, that's what gives value to me. You know, when other people are taking the opportunities that, you know, they, they're given and trying to improve themselves. And that's something that I always want to be able to facilitate and help. So that's my most, you know, that's that's really my guiding star, as it were, is, you know, being helping people. So as I know that I get that feedback, it's always going to encourage me to keep doing this the same that. I posted today about, you know, well, what have you done, you know, so far today? What's your plan? Have you done your to-do list? And uh, a lady who I'm trying to get onto the podcast right now, who has another local business, which I love because I actually use her product, uh, wrote a comment in on the Instagram and she said, oh yeah, I need to DM you because we haven't, uh, you know, necessarily met up for that chat yet. And obviously, you know, she sees some value in the input that I'm giving. So uh, I think it's, uh, that's the main reason why I do all this and that's why I want to sit here and talk to you guys about what it is I'm doing. How's the um, lighting looking? Are we, are we liking this new lighting setup or are we not liking it? I think it's a bit harsh, but I have a different diffuser than what I had. I have a new diffuser up here. You can see with my hand, it's really bright up here. And I'm not sure that it's actually uh, giving us as much light as we want or it's maybe giving us too harsh a light. So we might need to bring the other diffuser out and uh, see if that helps us with diffusing the light a little bit better than, uh, than what's coming through because that is uh, bright as hell right now. But we did have the wall next to us. You can see that I've shifted positions, by the way. We're moving around and experimenting with the office being in different places. So I'm on the, on the armchairs right now and uh, that's a bit more relaxing than the office chair, but I don't think the lighting is working out quite so well. But hopefully the acoustics is a lot better here because I'm not stood next to the wall, so it's not an echo coming directly off the wall. We've got pretty much a good amount of distance that way and uh, that way as well. So we're going to continue to uh, work out on the vlogging setup and uh, see what works best for us to be able to talk to you guys and uh, see what's happening out there. So I'm going to sign off now. I think uh, the Instagram live's been up for about 15 minutes, but we've not really picked up uh, many viewers this time. And I'm just going to probably just do a quick edit on the video and upload that. And uh, then uh, hopefully uh, speak to you all tomorrow. Thanks.